I wanted to share with you guys just a quick peek at our onions that we have left from last year's garden, our storage onions, and I do see one that's starting to sprout, so I'll have to use that one today, but they, like I said, it's January 20th, and we still have these three bunches. There's one up there that's starting to go green on the top, but um, I'll use that within the few, next, well, probably today. But um, yeah, they do a pretty good job. They last a pretty long time. If you get storage variety, um, that is important because if you don't, they will sprout like that pretty quickly. So I just wanted to show you guys how long they last. <laughs> this is behind the scenes, Tom. Huh? <laughs> no, you gotta leave your glasses on. This is the editing version. Producing. Director. Waiting. And I'm still waiting. 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 Believe it or not, these glasses kind of... Oh. I would have never bought them because I thought it was a gimmick at first. But, Come on. But, yeah. Help your eyeballs. Oh, look at that mullet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it makes a difference when you're looking at the screen for a while. And it changes the, the tone of it. Night bomber. No, you have to. Yeah, I gotta get a little mullet trim. We're gonna start some seeds. It is January 20th. January 20th. And we're gonna start some seeds for the garden. Hello. Hi. So this is a seed container that we use. Helps organize all of our seeds. Makes them easy to find. You can get these at any craft store. I think they're actually for pictures, scrapbooking. I don't really know, but it works really well. They don't get wet. You can even take it out to the garden and keep them organized. So we're going to start onions, leeks, celery. I've never done celery before. So I'm going to try some pink celery and some green, but a lot of onions for green onions, storage onions, a couple different types of onions. Uh, here's just some seed trays and just a bunch of seed starting mix and I mix it with some compost that way holds the moisture a little bit better if you don't really know what you're doing this is a good book or something like this a week by week if you're starting seeds um, it goes from your last frost date so you kind of have to figure out where you're at when your last frost date of the spring is and then you count backwards week by week and then it'll tell you when to start all those seeds. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start a few things and you don't have to have anything special. You don't have to have a greenhouse. We just do it in the house. I'll just get a couple trays, some packs of seeds and you're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna start out with the first tray. We're gonna do storage onions that we're going to use for, instead of um, the tops, for green onions, we're going to, hopefully the bulbs will get big. So that's what you want for storage onions. So I have three different varieties of storage onions. So we're going to do one tray of those. And um, most likely it'll tell you on the back how, how deep to sow them, how far, you know, if you're planting indoors, it doesn't really matter how far apart, but if you're planting outdoors, it tells you how far apart to sow them. But yeah, I usually, in these trays, I usually do like two in each hole, just in case one doesn't germinate. But um, yeah, that's what you do. Oh, 
All right, so I have my onion tray done. Now I'm gonna do bunching onions, which is basically just onions that we use for the greens. It's like green onions. You cut the top off and use those. And then I have leeks and celery. And the celery, they're so tiny, you just surface so. Um, so the soil that I have is the seed starting mix mixed with compost and it was I wetted it down so it was I wet it down so it was moist when I put them in the trays and then once I get the seeds in then I will spray the top with some water so that they're wet enough and then I will put the top on to keep the moisture in put these on a seed tr a mat a warming mat and they don't need light until they come up until they sprout so we'll see how long that takes but usually it's a couple days depending on what it is um, so then after that then we'll get our rack with our lights and we'll put them under there so this is green celery and they are super super tiny so there's probably going to be quite a few in each cell. So that's all right. You can go back when they germinate. You can pull out the smaller ones. And then you're just left with the bigger one. And that's what you transplant into your garden. And celery is frost hardy. So you can put it out um, early, like with all your brassicas, like cabbage and stuff it can freeze once they're established the frost won't kill them so it's actually a good uh, spring crop and also in the fall when it's cold they're called cold weather crops so this one's cool i just ordered it because it was pink these are from baker creek seeds and i really like them i order from different places but i like baker creek a lot they're heirloom seeds Every year you can save the seeds from the plants. And if you do that every year, your seeds will be good indefinitely because they're heirlooms. They've never been hybridized. So it's pretty cool. It'd be cool to have pink celery grown in the garden. We'll see how, see how it does. We also have our freeze dryer out here where we start our seeds. Um, if you guys want to see some videos on how we use our freeze dryer, what we freeze dry, let us know. Pretty cool. If you have a big garden, even if you don't, even if you just buy stuff from the store when it's in season, when it's really cheap, just buy a bunch of it. Instead of freezing it or canning it, you can freeze dry it and it's shelf stable if you store it properly it's actually good for probably 20 years maybe more i don't know but it's pretty cool all right so now we're just going to do the bunching onions these are also surface sown we'll just put a they're a little bit bigger so we'll put a little bit of soil on on the top. These I'm just not, I'm just going to put a bunch in each cell. I'm not going to worry about only doing a few. But then I can separate them when I go to put them in the garden. Get a little bit more. Make sure you break up the chunks and just do a nice light layer over the top. And the leeks. Just a little bit deeper. Do like three or four 
in each cell. This just helps instead of dumping water in, um, it helps to keep the seeds in place so they don't float up to the top or get dislodged or, or whatever. And then once your seeds actually germinate, then we can water from the bottom in the tray. That way the roots will go down so that you have nice deep roots and all your plants. But for now, we just spray the top. And I'm just going to put one of these heat mats under each tray. Give them just a little bit of warmth. This is kind of a temporary spot till we get our other rack out with the lights. That's good, right under there. And we'll just put top on each one to keep the moisture in. Maybe with these. Even with the tags, it, you might have to move it a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then also the heat mat will create moisture. So they'll look kind of like steamy. But that's, that's a good thing. I just check them. I check it usually twice a day in the beginning just to make sure nothing's dried out. Yeah. Pretty simple. And you could easily just search, you know, for whatever seeds you have or whatever you want to grow. Just search like when you start seeds, um, how long before the, your last frost date, stuff like that. You could Google your, what's my last frost date. Um, you put in, I think you can put in your zip code or your city and it'll tell you, and that's approximate of course, um, but it'll give you a good idea. I usually give it a week, like, Whenever it says my last frost date, I, then I push it back a week, just just in case. But um, yeah, it's pretty simple. And we're just gonna let these go. And next week we'll probably start some more seeds. Scared of gardening? Don't be scared of starting plants from seeds. It's very cheap compared to going even going and buying plants. Um, but you know. I kill my fair share of seeds and plants and all that stuff. So I do a little bit of everything, um, but you don't learn unless you try. So try something new and you'll be pleasantly surprised, I think, at what comes out. So catch you guys on the next one.